good morning, um, good afternoon, and good evening, good day. Today we're going to work on a pair of uh, mermen from Mallorca, Spain. They are what a lot would consider entry level uh, Goodyear welded shoes. And it's an interesting brand because uh, they do provide shoes that are <clears throat> relatively inexpensive for what they are offering. In this case, we have a very particular Oxford, which you'll see has a museum effect. A museum effect is this different coloration that you can see on the leather. It has different tones. But so it also has a youth road or an Adelaide detail. Um, <clears throat> and the shoes originally come with uh, blind stitching. That is that the uh, stitching of the sole is not shown. It does not come with shoe trees, but I already had the uh, shoe trees inserted in them. Um, so let's proceed. As you can see, it's a two-tone shoe. And like I said, it has a youth road in here, so someone would consider that it's an Adelaide. Uh, I stitch in, they're completely brand new. And uh, I think they are relatively stiff for the kind of leather they are, and for being new. But uh, once you go past that breaking point, the shoes will become quite comfortable for your shoe, for your uh, foot, sorry. So the first step, even though they were boxed, would be to brush them and make sure you remove any lint to any dirt that might be on top of the shoe. This because, well, even though they have been in a box, if you're gonna work on a project, in this case, a pair of shoes, you should make sure that the surface is as clean as possible. The brushing of the shoe also allows you to look into detail the overall condition of the shoe to make sure everything is where it's supposed to and uh, if there's something that you discover then um, you know that you have to work on it because the shoes have been in storage for perhaps an ex extended period of time we, we do not know how long this how long ago these shoes were made <coughs> it's always ideal for you to uh, properly condition them and when i mean condition when i mean, when i say condition i do mean condition that includes the outer parts of the shoe, the upper, but also the uh, lining, which in this uh, particular pair of shoe is also made out of leather. So we're gonna take some of the Saphir Universal Cream and condition the insoles of the shoes. Not a complicated or long process, you just need to make sure that the uh, lining um, get enough gets enough uh, moisturizing cream so that it remains supple and that it's, it doesn't tear I think in a previous video I did show what happened to a shoe when the uh, lining is neglected it just creates those areas where the shoes might start uh, failing, especially in this heel counter area, <clears throat> which is what happened to an old pair of uh, Crockett and Jones of mine, which is the ones that I showed you in the video and I remember. Make sure to get the uh, tongue as well, because the areas under the tongue are also 
that is lining. Obviously, these shoes are uh, what I would consider fun shoes. They're not, even though they are Oxford, they're not relatively uh, what's the word that I'm looking for here? Um, they're more casual given the color pattern that they have. It's not a shoe that you're gonna wear formally with, I mean, you could wear them with suits, um, but you're not, you are not gonna wear them to a formal event um, where you normally wear Oxfords, at least that's my opinion anyway. So while uh, the uh, lining is absorbing the moisturizing cream, then we're going to proceed and remove the uh, laces so that we have access to the tongue. Now, normally, this would be the stage on which uh, we would also moisturize the uh, uppers, which we will do, but we will take a different approach. Um, a lot of the time, I'm, I end up using the Mumbai cream or um, the Saphir also, a universal cream for moisturizing the uppers. Uh, but today we will just use uh, a neutral cream, which is what we will be using also um, sort of for coloration, if you may. It's not strict coloration because it's neutral. But the idea is to um, moisturize and also if you were a black shoe, and you're using a black cream to use the cream, not, all, not only uh, for the addition of pigmentation and color, but also for the moisturizing agents that the uh, creams have. <clears throat> okay. Oh, we'll be using the Saphir Metal Dior Golden Metal line. Because of this museum effect, um, I would much rather prefer to use a neutral cream to, to not alter the uh, coloration. Make sure you cover the entirety of the shoe. You don't need that much cream when you're using it as a, um, just like a humectant. What you need is to make sure that you get um, of the entirety of the shoe. And make sure that you get uh, the tongs. See, when we're telling you about the aligning, all of this is leather, so all of this needs to be conditioned. Um, these interior parts of the shoe, which I had already conditioned with the uh, universal cream. Now, I could have gone with the universal cream for the uppers, but uh, the uh, 
gold or metal the ore sapphire cream not only has moisturizing agents but it also um, I think it has some small amounts of wax which allows you to provide a very subtle shine which sometimes people consider enough for shoes if you're not pursuing a um, mirror shine I don't think it's enough for you to protect the shoe thoroughly from um, environmental challenges like well water would be the mainly uh, problem that you would face wearing shoes <clears throat> so that's why even though there is a little bit of uh, wax in this cream I will still also add additional layers of wax to make sure that the upper is properly kept uh, from the elements you can find when you would normally wear your shoes <clears throat> at this stage i think i'm gonna back in this with the shoe crease Now remember the shoe trees are quite essential because they help not only maintain the uh, all of the moisture is um, removed but most of it is so at this stage we already applied the um, cream it has a little time to dry so we'll provide a uh, shine now because this is neutral, there is no need for me to use the boar's hair brush, which is a stiffer brush. You can see that I add pressure to it and it's not given. Whereas a horse hair brush, as I press it, it gives. The idea for this is to make sure that the pigments are pushed into the leather, leather even though you're also trying to do that with your fingers, but um, the, with the brush you can get to smaller areas where sometimes you cannot access with your fingers um, but because this is neutral and the shoes are brand new I'm not gonna uh, use this today but that's the reason for it so again long strokes strokes making sure that uh, you get that initial shine on the shoe like I was commenting before you'll get a very discreet shine because of the uh, wax content in the cream not now that is because of the Saphir Minal Dior has cream uh, has some waxes in it not all of the creams in the market uh, might carry them I know that Saphir does, uh, Boot Black, which I also have used before, does as well. Uh, Brift, which is a Japanese company too, like Boot Black, also has some waxes. So you can uh, you can achieve a uh, very discreet shine just with the cream itself. As you can see here, you can start noticing that there is a little bit of a difference in. And this one, this one is shinier than this one. This is rather matte or dull. Um, <laughs> when you're dealing with brand new shoes, uh, the major uh, goal when you're shining them for the first time is to thoroughly inspect the shoes get familiar with them and, and to identify any uh, area that might have been overlooked by the company uh, the original manufacturer or um, maybe they were in transit um, exposed to some movement and they brushed against each other if they were not in a um, dust bag and sometimes there are little scuffs 
uh, on the shoe. So by doing the first shine, then you get more familiar with the shoe and get them ready for the first wear. <clears throat> and this would be enough for a basic shoe shine that is the application of moisturizers and uh, creams but then again um, this is because this is a brand new pair of shoes had these shoes not been brand new most likely i would have to had uh, some coloration here on the uh, edges edges of the uh, sole also maybe addition of color to compensate any loss of color due to the effects of the sunlight on upon the leathers and the pigments um etc but being that they're new this should be enough for a lot of people now if you want to add a mirror shine which we would do um, then well you need to move forward to the next step in this case i'm going to try the uh, pure polish which is a uh, domestic brand here in the u.s they make natural products uh, they are based out of uh, citrus so as long as, as as soon as you open any tin of their products whether it's the waxes or the creams or the cleaner that they sell you can immediately feel the uh, scent of citrical products like oranges and limes tangerines etc <clears throat> now like we commented before uh, we need to make sure that the leather is protected so the wax uh, in the cream might not be enough so we will add a very thin layer of wax all over the shoe now you have to add it thin um, because in these areas where the shoe will break and uh, bend when you're using them if you add too much of a wax layer it, it it breaks and it cracks and it looks unappealing there's nothing technically wrong with the shoe or the wax it's just that it bends and it looks it looks odd it's an accumulation of white spots and it's just look looks unappealing but again there's nothing wrong with the shoe so make sure that you add a uh, first layer has to be thin but it also has to protect the whole shoe currently here in the US we are in the summertime <clears throat> so there is a lot of Sun and the temperatures are rather hot throughout the day especially in the area where I live um, we do have the four seasons and uh, right now we are expecting temperatures of around 90 degrees Fahrenheit which would be 38 39 degrees Celsius so it's gonna be quite hot and in this time of the year I do not prefer uh, to wear mirror shines I prefer to wear those more during the winter time where there is less sunlight because we have uh, most of the time overcast skies and the shoes they are rather um, no dark because of the lack of light that's why a mirror shine in the winter and, the, and in the uh, fall makes more sense for me now that's just personal preference so I think I will want to wear these shoes rather quick given the coloration perhaps with some jeans so I'm not gonna go forward with a um, mirror shine I'm sorry I said I, I, I was but I decided that I I'm, I'm not gonna do it so I'll just add this um, initial layer of wax and um, I think uh, that's gonna be it for rather basic uh, shoe shine treatment and 
this is gonna be a really really short video and I would like for you to tell me what do you think about that do you prefer shorter videos do you enjoy watching the whole thing happen like I know a lot of people make uh, videos on how to shoe shine I mean shine shoes sorry um, and some of them you also get to see the whole process some of them you do not just see uh, highlights of the uh, <clears throat> processes and treatments but I have always liked uh, to show everything I think uh, when I was learning this a long time ago um, I was a little bit frustrated that I saw uh, the initial stage of the shoes and then some um, treatments but I never saw the whole thing and when I was trying to replicate or mimic what I was seeing I didn't know uh, what was enough so that's why I decided well if I'm gonna ever get involved in making videos which I never thought I was gonna be doing it it's rather cathartic for me so that's why I do it um, I decided to go with the whole the whole treatment Now I'm gonna lace them. Uh, as you can see, we have one short and one long. So this short is just gonna go straight over here. And then this long one is gonna be the one that goes parallel, making the uh, bars like they were before. It's just like, any, like a lot of things, really the shoes, just personal preference, how you lace your shoes also. But I think uh, this, for this, particular pair it's parallel bars they look um, rather nice <sighs> I wish there were a method in which we can compare uh, the quality of uh, the shoes and the shoes materials because well these are like I said mermans and they are considered a um, entry level type of shoe now you've also uh, if you've been following the channel you've seen that we've also shined uh, uh, Carminas which, which are also made in the Spanish uh, shoe scene which is where these uh, mermaids are also um, designed at, I think, because they're made in China, assembled in China anyway, designed most likely in Spain. Um, we've also worked with uh, Corte in France. Uh, we've also dealt with uh, John Loves, which are English shoes, Justin Fitzpatrick, which are designed most likely here in the US. Or at least now he has his studio here in the US, um, but they are made in Spain. So we have had shoes from different parts of the country, I mean, different parts of the world. Um, uh, but it would be, it would be interesting for me to find a way to describe the shoes in a way that makes sense to you and adds, and adds value so that you can make a comparison about uh, the characteristics of the shoes. Now, from a video stance, you cannot feel uh, how rigid the leather is or how the sole feels. So I need to come up with a way to compare shoes so that you have an idea about what to what to expect out of each and every brand. <clears throat> so if you have any suggestions, please share them with me. Ultimately, this is our channel uh, and I would like for everyone that enjoys the videos to participate and engage so that we make videos that are useful for us as a community but also for any other person or individual that wants to get into this um, hobby of uh, shoes so again the same process you took the uh, shorter end and uh, pull it straight through. Now I'm gonna finish this over here.
Okay. Now, just uh, give the shoe the final brush. that wax uh, work its magic Shined versus unshined. Long strokes. Just like that. The shoes are ready to be uh, worn for the first time. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll see one of these days I'll wear them. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so and let us know what your thoughts are. Thank you for stopping by and uh, have a good day.